Okay, our next principle. Our next principle is abstraction principle. What is the abstraction principle? The main aim behind this abstraction principle is reduce the duplication of information. Mm, in other words, we can say don't repeating again and again. The repeating things mean it is duplicating your effort also because you have to do same thing again and again. Okay, I give you a natural example, the real time example to understand what is the abstraction principle. Think about the pizza in a pizza shop and before creating a pizza they define the pizza base. Once defined pizza base they have to add different kind of instance like fish, vegetable and after changing the instance you can get different output but you don't want to change the pizza base because same thing you are using. So likewise in the programming you are you have a pizza base like a function and you are passed the instance like in here vegetables and you get a different output through the instance. Like same thing in the programming also. Okay. Um, object oriented programming. Object oriented programming always use this concept. Abstraction principle widely used in the object oriented programming. Okay, I give a programming example. Think uh, in this side, there's not, not duplicated, it's been abstracted in good method. And once you define a method, when I mean, you want to call it, you pass the parameters and get the output. And, and think this one and again you are not need to define only you have to call the function and get the output and if you want to get the average you can call again this function and get output but I think if you not have the abstraction and you're duplicating you're getting some in some place you are getting some and again when you want to add another number uh, here at 4 and 5, here at 2 and 6, again you have to define the method, again you have to add the operations, uh, duplicating code again, code again and again. And if I say the abstraction principles are not good, see there is uh, um, 8 lines, but here have few lines, that is always duplicating your effort, also duplicating, therefore the uh, abstraction principle is a good concept if you have implemented in your program. Always, less code is a good output and it reduces the cost for the output product, final product, and reduces the effort. And um, you can maintain easily if your codes are abstracted. That is the main things that you have to know inside the abstraction principle. Okay, next we go to the next principle. The portability principle. What is portability principle? Over features or facilities that are dependent on a particular computer or a small class of computers. What is portability? Portability is a characteristic attributed to a computer program if it can be used in an operating system other than the one in which it was created without requiring major rework. That means if we can run our programs on different kind of operating systems without doing much changes to our program that is what we call the portability violation examples of portability Fortran Fortran is was a first generation language nowadays hardware are standardized we can run uh, programs on any kind of operating systems uh, by doing um, little changes but early it was different. Fortran was developed for IBM and it was highly dependent on hardware. Input and output was machine dependent. To use it in another PC, we have to write input output routine which compatible to that machine. So Fortran violates portability principle. Now we see what are the D examples of the portability principle. Java. Java adheres the portability principle. Java programming language and runtime environment has made it possible. How? Java programming language and runtime environment has made it possible to have programs that run on any operating system that supports the Java standard without any porting work. Here, 
Potting is the task of doing any work necessary, sorry, necessary to make the computer program run in the new environment. Second example, Java applets. Java applets in the form of pre-compiled bytecode can be sent from the server to client, serve in one operating system and client program in another operating system. But we can send Java applets between server and client without changing our applet program. C, C++ and Java. C, C++ are portable, but Java is more portable than C and C++. For an example, int have a specific size in Java. In Java, int is 32 bits while C and C++ the sizes of an integer varies dependent depending on a platform and compiler. The second example Java has a bunch of standard libraries that C and C++ don't have. For an example threading, networking and GUI libraries. Libraries of these sorts exist for C++ and also C but they are not part of the standard and the corresponding libraries available can vary widely from platform to platform so finally we can conclude the portable languages or the languages that are adhere to portability principle is much easy to use than the uh, uh, languages that violates the portability principle. Regularity principle Definition Regular rules without exceptions are easier to learn, use, describe and implement. Interpretation There should not exist any exception to grammar rules. Example If a semicolon denoted the end of the line it should be required after every statement. This example shows how it is violated by Pascal language. In Pascal, use semicolon after block statement optional. This semicolon use optionally and this statement doesn't contain any semicolon. So, Pascal language violates regularity principle. Uh, this example also show how regularity principle violated by C programming language. In C programming use of semicolon after do while loop and use semicolon after struct. This rectangle show the struct of do while loop after the struct semicolon is used. So, it so it's violate the regularity principle. In this example, show how compliance with regularity principle. In Java, every statement end with semicolon. In every statement end with semicolon. So, Java programming language doesn't violate regularity principle zero one infinity principle what is zero one infinity principle the only reasonable numbers in programming language design are zero one and infinity it suggests that arbitrary limits on the number of instances of a particular entity should not be allowed specifically an entity should either be forbidden entirely one should be allowed or any number of them should be allowed we should not give programmers to remember much things here is a natural example consider filling a cup with something as we can see this large cube cannot be put into this cup so here possibility is zero and in second one if we take a cylinder same size as the cup we can put exactly one instance of the cylinder like that into the cup then if we take small balls we can put many number of balls into it so these kind of numbers are easy to remember 
So, if we take shapes like this, one can put four of these shapes to in into the cup and another can put two of these shapes to the cup. Those are specific values and have to remember those specifically. Previous values are not like that. Now let's see the violations. Fortran 77 is a good example of violation. Here the array dimensions are limited to 3 and identifier name should be less than or equal to 6 characters. Those are the violation situations. L now we will see adhere situations. Arrays in algo can have any number of dimensions and can have negative indexes. Second one, there is no limit on the depth of the class hierarchy in small talk. Third one, in Java, maximum length of a variable name is 256 which can consider as infinite. Those are the inf adhere situations for 0, 1, infinity principle. Preservation of Information Principle It says that the language should allow the representation of information that the user might know and that the compiler might need. Now we will look at how different programming languages adhere or violate the preservation of information principle. The Fortran do loop adheres by providing the compiler with enough information to optimize performance. Fortran programmers were able to see what variables would be used for indexing in do loops and keep their values in index registers for optimization. This is a sample do statement. Index do loop is combined with restrictions on array indexing formulas or array handling. Let's consider an example to see how Perl violates this principle. It's important to note that Perl arrays or scalars you pass to a subroutine merge together into the single array at underscore. You can pass multiple arrays to a subroutine but they'll be jammed into at underscore together. The same goes for hashes. In Perl, arrays lose their identities when passed into a subroutine. When you consider this example, you see there are two arrays A1 and A2 passed into this sub1 subroutine. This subroutine prints number of elements in A1 and in A2. So the answer should be 4 and 3. But the output is 7 and 0. So that after passing arrays to the subroutine, you have lost your original arrays. So then, how to find elements in one array but not in another? It is impossible. Information is lost. So your original array has lost its identity. Now let's go through a C programming language example where the principle is being again violated. In C, arrays can become pointers when returned from a function. This example, this is very bad. The array, new array is local to the function and gets destroyed when the function returns. You'd be left out with a dangling pointer and using it would invoke undefined behavior. 